Let's learn some advanced C2 phrases to help you build your vocabulary. And C2, this is just Cambridge's highest level qualification and shows that you are a highly proficient speaker of English. So I am gonna teach you these advanced phrases. I'll tell you the meaning. I'll give you some context as to how they're used. And I'm gonna teach you the pronunciation because if you're gonna use these phrases, you want to make sure that you are saying them correctly. So let's face it. Building your vocabulary is extremely important. And let's face it, is the first phrase that I would like to teach you. So this phrase is used to say that something is true and cannot be denied, or it is said before something that is true but unpleasant. And just keep in mind that you're really gonna use this phrase at the beginning of a statement. So to give you some context, let's look at a few memes. Let's face it, you laugh at anything I say. This is true and undeniable. Or let's face it, you're the reason I drink. In this case, it's true and, and unpleasant. Or let's face it, memes are a childish way to communicate and debate ideas. This is also true, but they do make for some great examples. Now, when it comes to pronouncing this phrase and you want to make sure you're saying these words together instead of pronouncing the words individually, one thing to keep in mind is that linking may occur. And this often happens when the final sound of one word is a consonant sound and the beginning sound of the next word is a vowel sound. So let Let's face it, the final consonant sound in face may get linked with the vowel sound in it, and it's going to sound like face it. It's almost like we're carrying that consonant sound over to the next syllable. Face it. Let's face it. You know, let's face it. If you would like to continue building your vocabulary, well then you need to subscribe, turn on notifications, that way I can become your teacher. My name is Wes, the channel is Interactive English. It's all about trying to help you reach your fluency goals. And the next C2 phrase that I wanna teach you is few and far between. It means not happening or existing very often. And you would say that something is few and far between. So it, it's often going to follow the verb to be, and typically it's gonna come at the end of a statement. In this town, good workers are few and far between. This winter, snowy days have been few and far between. And that's true, it's been a rather mild winter. Or I could say miracles are few and far between. In each of these sentences, the phrase follows the verb to be and comes at the end. Of the statement. As for pronunciation, the very first thing that I want to point out is that the word and may get reduced to n, and this is common in spoken English, and, and keep in mind it's also an unstressed sound, n. Now, it begins with a vowel sound, and the word before ends in a consonant sound. So once again, linking may occur. Few when few when far between. And reductions, they're quite common. And in this case, it allows us to just say the phrase quickly. Few and far between. Few and far between. Just listen for it. All I'm saying is that the really good guys are few and far between. With the wealthy families in the countryside are few and far between. Friends, close friends, are few and far between. Now, when it comes to improving your pronunciation, good apps are few and far between. However, I want to talk to you about a great app for fine-tuning your pronunciation skills, and that is Elsa Speak, who is the sponsor of today's lesson. This is an app that I actually heard about from many of you, so I thought that I would check it out and just see what it's all about. So I downloaded the app, I started exploring, and I was really impressed with all the different things that, that you can do. Practice daily lessons, improve pronunciation. Let's say that you want to study by topic, and there are many different topics to choose from. So what if we go to lifestyle? And as you can see, there are a lot of different lessons to help you practice and improve. But I think the coolest part of the app is the ability to practice words and phrases that you want to learn. So we can type in the phrase, let's face it, and then we can listen to the pronunciation. Let's face it and then practice saying it. Let's face it. Now let me show you what happens if a mistake is made and I mispronounce a word. Let's facet. 
As you can see, you get instant feedback, which then allows you to try and make adjustments. And right now, when you click on the link below and download the Elsa Speak app, you can get seven days of the pro membership for free. But you can use my discount to get 85% off a lifetime membership or 40% off a one year membership. So let's face it, this is a great way to practice and improve your pronunciation. And if that's what you'd like to do, check out those links and discounts in the description. Now let's get back to our C2 phrases. And the next one that I have for you is fall into place. And this is when things are happening in a satisfactory way without any problems. So it really does have a positive connotation. And, and often you're referring to several things that are going on and you could say everything is falling into place. So let's say that we're working on a project and toward the end, everyone is completing their work on time, the numbers are adding up, people are working well together and we're gonna finish well before the deadline. So in that case, I could say, as we got toward the end of the project, everything was falling into place. When you pronounce this phrase, keep in mind linking will often occur. We can link that consonant sound in fall with the beginning vowel sound in into, fall into, fall into, fall into place. You know, say it, say it with me, fall into place, good. Our next phrase, for the best. This refers to an action that is done in order to improve a situation or, or produce a good result, although at the time it's going to seem unpleasant. And I think a great example would be uh, ending a relationship and breaking up. So let's say that you are planning to break up with me and our relationship's coming to an end. I hope this, this is just an example. And of course, I'm very sad. I would say, please, please don't break up with me. People like you are few and far between. And then you would tell me, you know, let's face it, it's for the best, okay? We, we need to break up. It's going to improve our situation in the future. It's for the best. Ted's stepdad and I have separated. Oh my God. Oh. It's for the best. Well, thank you, but uh, we think it'd be better if we left. Not because of last night. It's for the best. I think that pronouncing this phrase, it's, it's not too difficult for the best. The only thing that I would tell you to keep in mind is that the article the, it is the weak the, and you're using the schwa sound, that uh sound, because it comes before a word that begins with a consonant sound, for the best for the best. The next phrase is conflict of interest. And you may be thinking, wait a second, I have heard this phrase and that is because it describes a situation that is quite common. So this phrase is very useful. And we're talking about describing a situation in which someone cannot make a fair decision because they will be affected by the result. So uh, let's just say that I am going to judge a contest for children and my daughter is one of the participants do you think that i am a fair judge or would you say that i have a conflict of interest because this is my daughter i would love to see her win so perhaps i'm not capable of making a fair decision in this case. And you would say, look, Wes, you clearly have a conflict of interest. And I'm sure that you can think of someone that you know who has had a conflict of interest because like I said, this is a very common and useful phrase. For pronunciation, there is some more linking going on. We can actually link all three of these words together. We can link that final consonant sound in conflict with the beginning vowel sound in of conflict of, and then we can link that consonant sound with the beginning vowel sound in interest. Conflict of interest, conflict of interest. And one thing I wanna point out with that preposition of, whenever you see this word linking often occurs, such as in this phrase, conflict of interest. Then we have the phrase, something dawns on someone. And this means to understand or realize something for the first time. I was about to pay for the groceries when it suddenly dawned on me that I forgot my wallet. And I just realize it, all of a sudden it dawns on me. And there are some great collocations with this phrase. You could say something suddenly dawns on someone or something finally dawns on someone. And when you're pronouncing this phrase, there's more linking. You can link the final consonant sound in dawns with the vowel sound in on, dawns on. 
However, I think people may often use this phrase in the past tense in which they're going to say dawned on. And, and that can be a little trickier because of the repetition when we're linking something dawned on me or dawned on him or dawned on her. And you hear that repetition dawned on. Our next phrase is to crack down on something or crack down on someone. And it just means to take strong action to stop something. And in order to show you this phrase being used in context, I have some news headlines that I'd like to share with you. Washington Bill aims to crack down on street racing. Three things we know about Netflix's efforts to crack down on password sharing, something that I'm not too happy about. The Supreme Court might not crack down on big tech after all. And when you pronounce this phrase, more linking may occur. We can link the final consonant sound in down with the vowel sound in on, crack down on. And I think this is a little easier to say than the other one, something dawned on someone. But linking, it's very common. It allows us to connect these words and say these phrases easily and smoothly. Crack down on. In the blink of an eye, this is our next phrase and it means extremely quickly. And it really makes sense because when you blink, well, that, that's pretty fast. Now, you're likely going to use this phrase at either the beginning of a statement, in the blink of an eye, something happened. Or you'll use it at the end of a statement, something happened in the blink of an eye. This phrase may often get used when referring to time or maybe someone is just suddenly gone. And instead of saying something happened very quickly, I would just switch it out something happened in the blink of an eye. Now, I have been married for, let me do the math, six years now, and I could say that, well, this time has passed quickly. Six years have gone by in the blink of an eye. For pronunciation, we're gonna use that weak the with the schwa sound, and then link those final four words the blink of an eye. And once again, it's like we're, we're just carrying that final consonant sound over to the next syllable. Blink of an eye. The blink of an eye. And the next phrase, I really like this one, but in. It just means to interrupt. And really, you would be interrupting a conversation, a discussion, or just getting involved in someone else's business. And you might hear someone use this phrase if they're telling another person to stop doing this. Don't butt in. Just make sure my idiot interns don't screw up. Give the IB Hepburn. Don't butt in. Or perhaps someone needs to interrupt and they would say something like, I'm sorry to butt in, but, or I don't mean to butt in, but. Mary, I don't mean to butt in, but maybe you and Derek could co-host the party. What? Something I want to say about the pronunciation of this phrase, and this is more related to the American accent because I am from the U.S., and that is that T sound in but, that double consonant T. Because it comes between two vowel sounds, I am going to say this as a flap T, and it's gonna sound more like a soft D, but in. And then we can link that flap T with the vowel sound in in, but in. Hey, 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 don't but in. Then there's the phrase, by all means. This is used to give permission, like you're just saying, yes, certainly. And often you may use this as a standalone statement. Uh, you're responding to someone's question. Could I borrow this book? By all means. Can I make a suggestion? By all means. Perhaps you are asking me, would you like me to hit the like button? And I would say, well, yeah, by all means, please go ahead, hit that like button, by all means. When it comes to the pronunciation of this phrase and someone is speaking quickly, they may use intrusion to link the two vowel sounds in the words by and all, by all. And intrusion is when you're adding either a slight W sound or a slight Y sound, and that then allows us to link two vowels. And we're gonna use a slight Y sound, which comes after front vowel sounds like I. So by all means. And you hear that slight Y sound, by all by all means. Then we have the phrase behind closed doors. This refers to a situation that is hidden or kept secret from the public without an audience or crowd watching. And again, this is a situation that is common, so I think this is a very useful phrase. People may often use this phrase when referring to government or business decisions that are kept secret. We didn't want the public to know, so the decision was made behind closed doors. And yeah, secrecy, 
it's not a good thing. When pronouncing this phrase, elision may occur. An elision is when certain sounds get removed. And I'm talking about the t or d sounds when they come between two consonants. So think about the word handsome. That D, it comes between two consonants, it elides, we don't hear it. With our phrase, both of the D sounds in behind and closed, they're going to elide, they come between two consonant sounds, and, and it's like they get muted, and you just don't really hear it. Behind closed doors, behind closed doors. Once again, just listen for it. I heard about a third fight between you and Apollo. Behind closed doors. How did he know to choose them? Everything happened behind closed doors. What's going on? There's been people whispering behind closed doors. So we just talked about secrecy with the phrase behind closed doors. Now let's go in the other direction and talk about the phrase come to light. This refers to facts that become known publicly. And once again, there are useful collocations with this phrase. We could say that new evidence comes to light or new facts may come to light, or new details may come to light. I could say recently new details came to light showing how the decision was made behind closed doors. And it's like this secret information became known publicly. When you pronounce this phrase, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing that I would like to point out is the word to. When you're stressing it, it's pronounced just like I said to, but there is another accepted form of pronunciation and that is when it's unstressed and it's going to sound more like t. And if somebody is saying this phrase quickly, th they may not stress that word and it's going to sound like come to light, come to light. Some new evidence comes to light. Now for a little review. I, I know that this lesson has gone by in the blink of an eye, but by all means, please watch another video lesson because let's face it, great vocabulary lessons like this one are few and far between. And I, I am a firm believer that if you keep practicing and you keep learning a little bit each and every day, when it comes to improving your English, everything's just gonna fall right into place. So I think I need to wrap things up and say goodbye. It's for the best. And if you enjoyed the lesson and learned something new, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. So long.